That is a great look of the Siegel Center here in Richmond, Virginia. Sold out house here today for the season opener of ECU basketball as they take on McNeese State. Sean Robertson, John Feinstein, great to be back with you again for another college Thank basketball you. Good season. Good to be back with you. And our Rams Unlimited crew. Here is the starting lineups first for the visitors. Javon Garcia, Shahada Wells, DJ Richards, Kristen Shoemate, our player to watch, and Octavian Column. Also for VCU, Max Shulga, our player to watch for the Rams. Zeb Jackson, Kwani Kwani, Michael Bell, and Kristen Furman getting the start tonight for head coach Ryan Odom. First season here at VCU, but his 10th overall season as a head coach. We also know what he did at UMBC in that 2018 run, but great success at Utah State along with Lenore Ryan and also with Charlotte. And the head coach, the interim head coach for McNeese State tonight is Brandon Chambers who does have a VCU connection. He was a student manager on the 2011 Final Four team. That's a VCU degree. Absolutely. <laughs> and Will Wade, who is the head coach of McNeese State, but of, of course is not here tonight. He was an assistant on that team as well. So and we do have some VCU connection. for two years. Yep. So yes, you're right about the connections. Will Wade is back in Lake Charles, Louisiana. He was here yesterday, uh, but at 12.01 today, he was not allowed to be in the building. So he was here for their practice and then went home. So hopefully he is watching that game. And oh, I think he's watching. Here in Louisiana. And it's great to be with you for another college basketball season as McNeese State controls the opening tip with Wells going up against Shulga. Quick turnover there for the Rams. Bell in transition. Here's Furman underneath. Shulga for three. And that's a perfect start for VCU. A steal, pushing the ball up court, and a three that swishes. Sugar shot 36% at Utah State last year. A big reason why he has a second team preseason selection. Shoemate nice challenging block. Furman and was denied. Jackson on the other end pulls up for three. Long rebound to Shoemate. That's only a good shot in transition that way if it goes in. But BCU will look to quick shoot the ball when they get the chance. Wells Good throws defense one up. again. They haven't gotten the ball to the rim yet. Three possessions. Kwani, Kwani, the transfer from Cal. Hands to Jackson. He's a good player last year on a bad team. Furman has it against Shoemate. Jackson has it with 10 to shoot. Bell on the baseline. That's a charge, I think. No, they called it a block. I didn't have the best view on the baseline there. Bell will draw that charge replay. on DJ Richards, and this is the first basket. A nice pass there out of the post to find the open shooter. VCU back on offense. Bell controlling it against Shumay. As John mentioned at the top of the broadcast, totally different VCU lineup from a year ago. Kwani for three. Seven leading scorers for VCU's NCAA tournament team a year ago are all gone. A whistle and a foul. It might go against Wells of McNeese State, and that's the case. Zeb Jackson, the leading returning scorer for VCU with the change in the graduations and the transfers from last year. And he has a completely different role. Last year he was a spark plug off the bench playing 17 minutes a game. Now he's the starting shooting guard and he shoots. For three. A little bit short rebound picked up by Garcia. And Jackson looks a little flat footed on that shot. And now another whistle as this will go against VCU as they got back on defense. Ryan Odom thought that was no foul but it was going against the Rams. I think we'd agree Ryan Odom's a little biased. Just a little bit. But BC, uh, McNeese still hasn't gotten the ball to the rim on, uh, on, uh, on offense. Now, of course, I would expect these shots will at least hit the rim. Garcia, second team preseason Southland selection. Puts McNeese State on the board. He's a transfer from... UMass, as well as Sequoia Junior College, who was a very good three-point shooter last year for the Sequoias, shot 46% from distance, 85% from 
from the line, made one of two. But he did hit the rim. On the second attempt, the first one went right through. It was through. a swish, right. 3-1 VCU lead just underway here in the season opener of the 2023 year. Nope. Wraparound pass stolen by DJ Richards. That was a force there. Wells for three. Shoe made an offensive rebound. Attacking the rim. Bell the rebound for VCU. Nice play by Shoemate getting that offensive rebound, but he couldn't finish. Oh, nice, nice move, move by Bell, and he's fouled. He sure was. Oh, my goodness. That was a beautiful move. Shades of Allen Iverson. Garcia the foul on McNeese State, but that was Michael Bell, a 6'7 freshman, handling the ball. We were watching him in warm-up shoot the ball. He's not a great shooter yet, but he doesn't look like a freshman, does he? He doesn't. 6'7, we talked about that. Uh, earlier this week with Coach Odom playing in that French under-21 league. Yeah, that'll grow really you Really developed bit. his game and made him get bigger, got stronger, Is and it? he does not look a, look like a traditional freshman. No. Another player came out of France recently who's gotten some attention. Yeah, he plays in Texas. Yeah, he plays in Texas. <laughs> plays for a Hall of Fame coach. Overall number one pick. Overall number one pick. Looks taller than 7'4 to he me. He does. Speaking of Victor Wimbenyama, as Bell splits the pair, Rams have a three-point lead. Whoa. And we got a foul. It's going to be Afiko and Jackson just near us at the Looked like Jackson court. got bumped into the uh, McNeese player, and he probably did, but the bump wasn't hard enough, I think, in the mind of the referee to not call the foul. Second team foul on VCU. McNeese stayed already with three. As we are near three minutes gone by in the first half. Richards for three. Rebound picked up by Jackson. Game's very physical already. Remember, these are experienced teams. Bell's a freshman, but almost everybody else is junior, senior, graduate. And Furman was on the team last year, so another returning player with experience. Whoa. A lot Bell of contact. trying to create. Furman now has it with under 10. Here's Jackson. Nice pass to Bell. Oh, really nicely done. And Bell can shoot from that range. He's got three of VCU six, and they're up by five. Garcia attacking the rim nice. against Jackson and found two. Tough move. Used his body to protect the ball and get the shot off and, get, and also get it in. Getting a shot off is one thing. Getting it in the basket is another. Garcia's first field goal of the night. Here's Shoga. Thought about it. Now going into the lane. And a good defense there. Shoga should have passed. A lot of contact. Major wow. contact and no whistles no at all. No whistles at all. And now we got players tangled. Here's Richards again, this time hitting a three. And now a stoppage. Shoemate and they, Kwani were tied gonna, up in the backcourt. Now they're going to, I think they're going to look at the They are. I think they're going to go to the replay. To see if that basket's going to count because the, the trail official ran in and held his hand up like, as if to stop play. But at the other end, play continued. Well, the lead official, Keith Fogelman, did signal that was a three-point basket. That did. did count. And they are going now to the replay to see whether or not there was a an aggressive foul on that play, and while that takes place, we'll take a timeout on the floor. 15-56 in the first half, and VCU and McNeese State all knotted up. Stay with us. Oh, we got an explanation after that melee that took place right before the timeout. Melee's a good Re word. Really nothing took place. There was no foul. The three-point basket by Richards counted, and we're knotted up at six with 15-56 to go. Sean Feinstein, yeah. I'm Sean Robertson, our Rams Unlimited crew, and that's what uh, I believe Andrew Boxdale mentioned to us. He signaled no foul, right. everything was good, right. and the three-point basket by Richards counted. Right, and there have been five fouls called in this game. There could have been about 12 because it's been very physical, and that plays a perfect example. Two guys lying on the floor, unable to untangle, and there's no call. Keith Fogelman. And not necessarily wrong. Well, let's see how consistent that will be. Keith Fogelman, Andrew Barksdale, and Kurt Tackett, the officials tonight. 
Shoga with a step back three. The rebound picked up by Shoemate. McNeese State weathering that first five, four and a half minutes so far as they look to take the lead. Shoemate underneath against nice Furman. again. Gives the Cowboys an 8-6 lead. Shoe made the preseason all Southland Conference selection. It's interesting. First team selection. Yeah, it's interesting when, oh, nice play. And a steal, and here's Wells on the other end. Uh -oh. Preseason all conference teams are a guess at this point because there's no seniors at the same school, it feels like. And Wells is another one, first team preseason yep. selection, a four point McNeese State lead. Kwani in the corner. Shot's just not going down for the Rams now. It's 10-3 since the opening salvo by Shoulder. Rams shooting only 25%. Richards hits another three for McNeese State. Ryan and Odom Ryan Odom timeout. gets that timeout as McNeese State is on a 9-0 run. Nick, check it, 12-0 run to make it a seven-point McNeese State lead. And when they look at the tape of this tomorrow, regardless of outcome, Ryan Odom's going to say to his team, you want the first good shot, but you don't want the quick shoot. There's a difference. And if you've got a good shot, go ahead and take it. But just because you see a little bit of an opening, if a defender is there, and McNeese has been good at, at recovering to the ball, you don't necessarily take the shot. You look for another pass, because there's still plenty of time on the shot clock. Well, one thing Will Wade mentioned earlier this week, the fact that we had to weather the storm, we had to play solid early just to kind of see how they would react to the crowd. It's sold out. It's the first opportunity to see VCU, a new look VCU squad with head coach Ryan Odom. And for about five and a half minutes, they've weathered the storm. They've taken control so far. Yeah, they, they did a good job, but they got a little bit lucky that v, VCU missed a couple shots that were open and makeable. Uh, and it, that's the way college basketball is. That's why basketball is. You don't make everything. And I said in our open that one of the keys to the game was overcoming first night jitters, especially on your home court. Because one of the things that happens is when you do go cold, the crowd in here can get very quiet. Very quiet. Some changes to VCU's lineup. Jason Nelson in for the first time, along with Roosevelt Wheeler. Oh, they changed defenses to a trap. And along with Toby Lawall is into the lineup. Shoga with a clean look for three. And that's a good shot, because he's a shooter. He's got six of VCU's nine, and that stopped the 12-0 McNeese State run. And that's what happens when you try to trap. If the trap doesn't work, somebody gets an open shot. And they almost turned the ball over, but did not. Here is Wells going up against Lawall and draws contact on Toby, that'll be his first. And you can see that McNeese's strategy is unless they've got a wide open three, they're gonna drive the lane every chance they get. And sometimes they'll go to the basket like they just did, and sometimes they'll try to kick it out to a shooter. But they're right. not gonna turn down a good three-point no. shot. They've got some good three-point shooters on their roster. Well, in college basketball today, you can't turn down a, an open exactly. three-point shot. Such Wells a misses the factor. first. Sorry. He was a 71% shooter a year ago from the stripe as Omar Cooper comes in for the first time to replace DJ Richards. One thing uh, about this game is the scorer's table is going to be very busy. Very. Because there are going to be players in and out. Ryan Odom, much like uh, Mike Rhodes, will play a lot of guys. And so will McNeese. Alfonso Fats Billups. And for the first time, a Verina product in this area. Missed a lot of last season with a broken thumb. Good Almost hands a turnover. By you. And they will call a turnover on the inbound mm -hmm. as LaWall touched it last. Well, actually, you touched it last. But well, the, the players on the court, LaWall um, touched it last. I was trying to protect the equipment here. Yeah, you did a good job. LaWall, you mentioned the injuries last year. He's fought injuries all through preseason. He has. And missed a week, three different occasions, three different injuries. Jason Nelson also missed a little time this offseason as well with nagging injuries as Wells shoots it over the wall and nailed the triple. Largest oh. lead of the night. Now that could have been called against Shoga because he put his arm out. He's fortunate to get the call. That's going to go against Omar Cooper who just checked in for the Cowboys. 
17-9, McNeese State with an eight point lead on the road here in the season opener for both. Nelson against Shoemate. A lot of local products on the floor for VCU right whoops. now. Billups turns it over. How many times have I said whoops? And almost got it back as McNeese State will maintain it. Billups played his high school ball at Verina. Roosevelt Wheeler, before he went to Louisville, played at John Marshall. Jason Nelson was a teammate of Wheeler at John Marshall here in Richmond. And then went to Richmond before transferring here. I'm dizzy. It's the new look college basketball. It absolutely is. I mean, every team in the country just about has guys who have played at three different schools. Garcia missed on the three. VCU trying to get back quickly. And Shoga has it. Eight point Cowboys lead. Here's Shoga going down the lane. Nice, nice no look, look to the away. wall. Shows he's more than a shooter there. No question. Put it on the floor nicely, and then as you called it, a pretty look away pass. Shoga was eighth in the Mountain West a year ago in assists at four night. Pretty one there. Here's Shoemate inside, and I think Wheeler will get called for the foul. And good job here by the officials after that collision that caused them to have to go to the the uh, monitor they've tightened up in terms of calling fouls and I think they needed to because the game was chippy at the start both teams with four fouls with 12 17 to go in the half Shoemate is at the line we mentioned his accolades preseason first team all Southland Conference he is came into tonight 84 points shy of 1,000 in his career as he misses the first Wade really likes Shoemate. He was a welcome addition you see when why. Wade came. Transfer from Tulsa, originally from Chicago, Illinois. Seven point lead for McNeese State. Notice Shoga doing a lot of ball handling against the McNeese pressure. And McNeese has picked up their intensity defensively just a little bit. Well, they've turned the ball, turned VCU over several times. What is it, five? You, Four got... to one right now. Yeah. And that's, usually that's the other way around. Here's Shulga now. Guarded by Wells, oh. and they get a block. Ooh. Might have been a break there for the Rams. That's Cameron Jones who just checked in for McNeese State. Call for the foul, and with that, a timeout on the floor. 18 to 11, McNeese with a seven point lead. Back after this. Back here at the Siegel Center as we are opening up the 2023 college basketball season. And VCU here at home trailing McNeese State 18 to 11. Right now, the Rams shooting just 40% from the field, four of 10. McNeese State shooting 50% from the field and 50% from three as they're three of six from downtown. And as we all know, statistically, uh, three of six, 50% is like shooting 67% from two. I want to mention one thing real quick. If we get a shot, the officials are all wearing red wristbands tonight because John Adams, who was the supervisor of NCAA officials for many years, passed away. Really, really good man, John Adams. Changed the officiating in the sense that he made officials more open and and let let the media yeah uh, talk to them to explain why certain calls were made and I knew John well and it's a, it's very sad and but also nice of them knew, to tribute gentlemen you knew very well Bobby Knight passing away last week I certainly that knew was a him tough very one well for the college basketball community <laughs> certainly knew Bob Knight very well both uh, from Indiana John yep. Adams and Bob Knight or the Knight was from Ohio originally another great pass by Shoga and the wall the benefactor for the finish. Well, you can see why Shogo was such a good player at Utah State, that's for sure. Not just a shooter, as you mentioned. Yeah. He, can, he can handle it and distribute. Well, he's been bringing the ball up against the pressure quite a bit. Five-point lead now for McNeese State. Lawal with four so far for VCU. 
Here's Cooper against Nelson. Wells with a step back three and fouled by Toby. That's his second and three opportunities at the stripe for Shahada Wells. Wells is a tough guard because he can get to the basket. Nice pass there. That'll second great assist there by Shoga to the wall. That will improve VCU's shooting percentage. But Wells is a tough guard because he can get to the basket, but if you give him space to shoot a three, he can make it. On the other hand. At the line, a little different story. He averaged nearly nine, nearly 17 points a game while he was at UT Arlington. He was a second team all Sun Belt player in 21 and 22 while he was there and then went to TCU after that. If you can tell me all the Division I teams in Texas, I will buy you an ice cream cone. You have no chance, don't bother. I was gonna say, I need more than an ice cream cone <laughs> to name those teams. There's about 30 of them. Man. Lawal comes out with his two fouls. Shoga is Shoga is also out as Wheeler comes back in. Like we said, the scorers table is going to be very busy. Well, we can reset it right now as Wheeler, Billups, Bell, Nelson, and Zeb Jackson back in for the Rams. Jones, Richards, Cooper, Garcia, God, they have quick and Collum back in. Here is Bell. Good fake. And left Billups open for three. Rebound picked up by Jones. Again, he's doing a good job of recovering the shooters. Other than the two shoulder threes, Rams haven't had very many open looks from the outside. Last touch by Billups. It'll stay on this side with McNeese State. Rams shooting just two of eight from three tonight. Sugar has the two makes. Everybody else is yeah. empty. Empty. I should know the answer to this question. Is Billups related to Chauncey Billups? No. No. No I, relation. I, I don't know. I mean, that's why I asked. No relation. Chauncey Billups, famously the player. That's another three. That's DJ Richards again from downtown. Who the Boston Celtics famously got when they did not get Tim Duncan. Richards with nine. Former Colorado Buffalo, Chauncey Billups. Yes, very good player, very Nelson good NBA player. Misses on the three and last touched by VCU. A 10 point McNeese State lead, largest of the night, and it is silence. This sold out crowd here at the Siegel Center. Let's see how long Ryan Odom goes without Shulga, who's been his one outside threat and his best passer. Right now he's on the stationary bike. Here's Garcia, Cooper has it now. As McNeese State slows up just a bit. Richards, the hot man with nine so far for McNeese State. Shot clock is at five. Here's Cooper against Nelson and scores just before the shot clock expired. One second on the shot clock. I don't think anybody on the VCU side thought that they were gonna have time. he was gonna have time to go to the basket, but he did. Pass stolen by McNeese State, who has a 12-point lead and looking for more. And another turnover. They're in the midst of a 7-0 run. Cooper again. Here's Richards against Bell. Good defense there by Bell. Down low was blocked. That was Garcia, blocked by VCU. Here's Jackson on the other end. And McNeese State gets back on D. A little zone look here. Kwani feels a double team. Billups saved it before it went out of bounds. Shot clock is at 10 for Kwani underneath. Nice pass. If that was hockey, it'd be legit to give two assists. That was a dart inside to Kwani. Sure was. Of course, when Dean Smith coached at North Carolina, they did give two assists. He probably set that up back then. Oh, sure, why not? He would come in and say, well, Phil Ford had 12 assists, but the way we keep it, he had 25. And it was true. Cooper harassed by Nelson. Good defense by Jason. Shot clock is at four for Richards, who now has an even dozen. Well, that's the third time in four possessions they've run the shot clock down and then scored. That's his fourth three-pointer in this half. And McNeese State's up by 13. 
Nelson comes up short. Kwani an offensive rebound. Jackson open for three. They need somebody to make a three. Wheeler another offensive rebound. Bell's not the guy. Kwani will shoot it. He misses. Apparently neither is Kwani. Cooper the rebound. And Brandon Chambers is telling Cooper to slow up. McNeese State on the road with the confidence and a 13-point lead early on. Inside of eight minutes. Good Jones block. had his three-pointer blocked by Bell. Bell Rams in transition. Here's Jackson. And now we got a foul. It'll go against VCU. Yep. I was going to say, Bell is very athletic, but the Rams simply can't finish. And he got called for the foul. Time out on the floor. 7.33 left in the first half. It's McNeese State by 13. Back here at the Siegel Center, Sean Robertson, John Feinstein, our entire Rams Unlimited crew for the season opener for what we hope will be a very exciting and probably a lot of twisted turns throughout the course of the season. And we've got a twist so far here in this first half. <laughs> not McNeese, the twist Ryan Odom wanted. No, not at all. <laughs> but right now, McNeese State on the road, leading by 13 against a stunned VCU crowd mainly because of their outside shooting. They're 55% from three. VCU 16% from distance and 33% overall from the field. Yeah, the two stats that jump out at you, as you said, are the three-point shooting, five out of nine versus two out of 12. Yeah. And only Sherga has made threes for, for VCU. And I'm surprised he's not back on the floor. Oh, he is back on the floor. Sorry about that. He came around the screen. And it's guarded, guarding Wells, who goes to the baseline yeah. and scores. Quickness there. And Wells almost stole the inbounds, but committed a foul. Break there for VCU, actually. But the other stat that you notice is that VCU, what's the one stat where VCU is almost always ahead of the opponent? Turnovers. Steals. Steals, Steals too, yeah. Yeah, five yeah. to one. And the five is McNeese, which you don't expect. The turnovers are... Cl closer, but still in favor of, in favor of Nice. Wells has 10. Richards leads all scores with 12. That's 22 of the 30 points for McNeese State. By the way, unless I'm mistaken, McNeese turned it over on their first possession and has not turned it over since. You're exactly right. Shot clock is under 10. Shulga for three. He's off balance. He was leaning left. Right-handed shooter. Kwani keeps it alive to Cullum. Inside, seven minutes, and McNeese State leading by 15 on the road. Here's Cooper with the left hand. Oh, a on. tough shot. Come on. Ryan Odom's pleading for a push-off, but he wasn't getting it there. Omar Cooper with a circus shot. His first basket of the game. 17-point lead. Kwani stopped on the double team. Here's Nelson into the lane. Nice. And scoops it in. Nice drive. I haven't seen that for a long time in this game. That stopped a 7-0 run. It have been a 12-0 run and two 7-0s. And a 14-2 run for McNeese State. Yeah. They've made five of their last seven field goals. Here's Column. Stripped by Good Jackson. Hands. Column gets it back uh -huh. to Wells over Kwani. Had it blocked. Lawal the rebound. Looked like a foul, but... Officials feeling they had the game under control, giving up some space there. No contact there on Shulga, no foul. Here's Kwani going into the lane. It looked like a foul and a walk. <laughs> and another turnover for VCU. Wells trying to go right by Kwani and gets fouled. You see, you had contact. Real serious contact under the basket in the, on the last possession. No call. This time you had to touch foul, and they call it. Again, the officials are supposed to call touch fouls. That's what the NCAA wants, but and that's fine. But if you're going to call touch fouls, you got to call tackles. <laughs> that was a point of emphasis, I think, like three or four years yes, ago, years that they ago. were going to be more, they were going to be more focused on that. Right, and they called it for November and then stopped. And that's usually what happens. They say, "Oh yeah, we'll call." Because they go to their their uh, preseason seminars and say call the touch fouls, okay, and then in January they're not calling them anymore, which I think is good. 
because I don't like calling touch fouls. The only way you should call a touch foul is if it affects the player. If he loses his balance, if he turns it over, whatever, then you got to call it. But if it doesn't affect, if there's no advantage gain, let him play. Walls made both free throws. He's 5 of 7 from the line. The team is 7 of 11 from the stripe, and they're up 17 on VCU. And McNeese State is showing a lot of that 2-3 zone here in this first half. And that's a little bit of a surprise, actually. Here's Jackson trying to create. Again, that's why you never know what you're going to get in the first game. The only tape Ryan Odom had uh, of McNeese was exhibition games. And I'm betting they didn't show that zone. A one and one opportunity now for VCU at the stripe. As McNeese State is over the limit, 17 fouls with 5.04 to go in the half. Zeb Jackson, as we mentioned, the leading returning scorer from last year's team that won the A-10 regular season and tournament championship and missed the front end. First time in a long time that the A-10 didn't get any at-large bids. And I think it was a 13-year consecutive yeah, streak. Including, I think, 2013, they got six. Garcia misses. Shoe made an offensive Whoa. rebound. And LaWall sent it back. That was a very dramatic block. But you know, the best blocks are the ones inbounds. Bill Russell more or less invented the inbounds block. But that was still an impressive block. From no a guy what. that has a vertical leap of nearly 50. I inches. heard that. Ryan Odom told me 49 and a half. Yes, and it's legit. They put that up on social media. And I mean, I think Michael Jordan was 44. It's crazy his athleticism, but Richard says he's got another basket. That's 14 in the first half. His first on three. For the sophomore out of Houston. A 19-point McNeese State lead. Jackson for three. Finally, Finally drops in for Finally. Zeb. Somebody other than Shulga makes the three. That's Jackson's first field goal. He was 0-5 before that make, and it's 36 to 20. They need him to score. He needs to be the second or third leading scorer on this team. VCU just three of 14 from three. Here is Garcia going to the rim. Zeb Jackson wanted a travel. Don't get it, won't get it. Instead, he'll pick up the foul, his second. There was definitely contact there. He did slip, but the slippage might have been brought on by the contact. You mentioned about the A-10 last year just getting VCU into the NCAA tournament right. and one year had six. That's for, a, I won't say a mid-major, but a it's not high mid-major mid -major program high where you mid get six yeah, that's amazing. in like that. That's amazing. Garcia and gets the first. Here's a little trivia for you. Mike Rhodes was teed up in that tournament game against St. Mary's. Do you know how many technical fouls were called on him in his career at VCU? I should know that. I should. It, it wasn't many. That was, his own, that was his only one in his last game coaching VCU. And I said to him after the game, what'd you say? And he told me the word he said, and it was right for him to be teed up. <laughs> Got the T. And, of course, he is on now at Penn State. Penn State, where he'll do a heck of a job because he's a very good basketball player. No question. Player. No question. Did a really good job here. Jackson tried to make two in a row. Furman and Officer rebound harassed inside by Garcia. And Garcia will get whistled for the foul. And with that... Our final media timeout, 3.50 left in the first half. Furman will get free throws when we come back as we see trails by 18. Back here at the Siegel Center for the final 3.50 of this first half at a surprising first half if you are a Rams fan because McNeese State has come from Louisiana and has really taken it to the home team for the most part, 38 to 20. VCU down by 18 and has really been the guard play of Richards and also Wells. They've combined for 26 points right. so far in this first half. Well, and the, the, the three-point shooting number tells you the story of this game. VCU's taken 15 threes and scored nine points off them. McNeese has taken nine threes and scored 15 points off them. That's a huge gap. No question. Furman at the free throw line for VCU. Front end of a one and one. He one of four from the strike. Didn't go in, but he's got a nice stroke. He does. 
Did not see a lot of time last year. Played in only 14 games for VCU. They're playing but, more than that this year. But they said his upside is is really strong this season. Cooper has called for an offensive foul. Is that the first offensive foul of the game? I think it is. I think so. It was a push-off. That's why it was called. You put your hand out in front of the official, and he can see the distance, you get called. If you, if you collide with somebody, you might not get called. Shoe made back in for McNeese. Shoga along with Jackson, Bell, Furman, and Billups on the floor. Column, Cooper, Shoemate, Richards, and Garcia for McNeese. They are guarding Shoga. They don't want him to shoot. He's open, though. Shot clock is under five. Here's Shoga. Leaves it for Furman, and we've got a whistle. I think Furman caught a break there because he was surprised by the pass. He thought Shoga was going to shoot. And as you mentioned, Shoga is a very good passer. That's Garcia's second. Well, it's one place where the Rams do have an advantage. Ten fouls to eight now, so it's two shots. Double bonus, yep. I'm going to put myself in trouble and say he's going to make both these. Wow. Mm. The first hot take first. of the season Oy. from John Feinstein. Mm -hmm. He's going to make both. Got one. He's halfway there. A couple of changes for McNeese. Wells back in along with Cameron Jones. Transfer from South Carolina State by way of Jacksonville State. Wearing number 35. So we met you played in 14 games last year. Did Furman. Ah, I'm 0 for 1. 0 for 1. Billups tried to save it, but it went out of bounds to McNeese. And the second one wasn't close. Furman picked VCU. Look at, listen, listen to these schools he, he chose VCU over. Pitt, Penn State, St. John's, and Temple. They decided to come here. So Patino didn't up the offer? Did not up the offer. No shot. Uh, you can see why, though. Or Jeff Capel, though. either. Or Jeff Capel, right. Here's Collum going against Furman. Going with the scoop. Right. Doesn't go. Here's Bell. That looks like a walk. Billups lost control out of bounds. And same thing. The thing about Furman is he's got what the experts call a long body. Yes. You, nobody's tall anymore. He has long arms. You know, he's got a great reach. He's going to block shots he already has. So I can see why a lot of schools would want him. That's one thing that is really noticeable with this group. That front court that Coach Odom has is very, very long. Wheeler, They can Bell, block shots. LaWall, Furman, very long. Here's Wells to Jones for three. And oh my got goodness. the home bounce. Th that hit the rim seven times before it went in. My goodness. That was almost that Kawhi Leonard three-point <laughs> shot when he was in Toronto. Yeah, they climbed up over the rim. When he beat Philadelphia in the game seven. The game seven. A 20-point lead. Sugar kept that pivot foot down for Jackson, who hits the three. Like we said, I mean, they need Jackson to make shots like that. He's got six so far in the half. And it's back down to 17. Two. Yep. VCU needs a stop. Will they get it? Here's Wells. They got, got the stop. Jackson pushing it quickly. Bell around the horn. Billups for three. There you go. Six in a row for the Rams, and they got it to within 14. I would take the use it or lose it now if I if I were McNeese, but I'm not. Chambers is calling the play. Crowd for the first time in this half since the tip-off has gotten loud. They were excited at 3-0. Whoa, that's a foul. Phillips tried to get it from the backside, could not. It's number nine, so it's one and one. It was close, but Billups was called for the foul. And Shoemate at the line for a one and one for McNeese. A credit to McNeese in this first half. They've done a tremendous job 
of keeping the crowd out of it. Until just a minute Until ago, you're absolutely now. right. And it's a very important one-on-one -on -one for McNeese. Shoemate only shot 58% from the line last That's year. way off. And Furman the uh, rebound for VCU. Oh. Dangerous pass stolen by Column. It was a nice idea, but not great execution. And now, see, Coach Chambers is again not going to take his user to lose it. They're going to let Wells run the offense. Let's see if they get the shot off in time to go for two for one. Shoemate nope. lost it. They go 0 for one. And now a foul. That was a bad foul by Shoemate. You know, they got to give it on Column. Oh, okay. Bad foul by Column. <laughs> Shoemate grimaced. I figured it was on him. Right. Two free throws coming from Shulga. Yeah, he's a really good free throw shooter. He shot 82% yep. last season and this for is Utah a, State. This is a real opportunity for VCU. They've hit two straight threes. They've got Shulga for two. And McNeese cannot hold for the last shot because there's 40 seconds left. So they should get one more opportunity with the ball. Shulga, second team preseason, A-10 selection was an honorable mention Mountain West selection last year at Utah State. And that's a very good league, the Mountain West. Yep. You got San Diego State in that conference. And they only played in the national championship game. That was a great story for them. And, yep. and the other... Coming up on a half minute, and VCU... Ram Nation on their feet. Wells for three. Out of bounds, that should be VCU ball. It is. And now they can hold for the last shot. And, and can get it to within 10 or nine. And they have first possession, second half. So. Big possession, big momentum swing for VCU in the midst of an 8-0 run. They've made four of their last field goals going into half. See if they don't try to get a high ball screen here and set up Shulga. Game clock under 10. Yeah, there's the ball screen, but they came over it. Jackson for three. Oh, Halfway down. Billups gets it off. No. And the first half ends. They got an offensive rebound, but couldn't convert. But still, good momentum for VCU going into the break, an 8-0 run to end the half, and now trail 41-29. Halftime activities will start at the Siegel Center right after this. We're about to begin the second half here at the Stu. Sean Robertson, John Feinstein, our entire Rams, Rams Unlimited crew for our season opener. Should be a great 2023-24 season as the road to March Madness starts tonight it does and it, here's a kind of little cool statistic for you tonight's november 6th yes and 1861 james naismith was born on november 6th so we're celebrating the start of the basketball season on the birthday of the man who invented basketball mm. and by the way the man who invented the american sport which i think basketball is yep was canadian They're, absolutely <laughs> here's a look at mcneese state early season schedule what are those schools? <laughs> there are some good ones with uh, Louisiana Tech, UAB. There are some good ones. There are also and some schools I've never heard of. They do take a trip to Ann Arbor. As Shulga hits the three, and that's an 11-0 spurt for the Rams, yeah. who now trail by nine. And that's a great start for VCU. But, of course, they had a great start in the first half, just like that. Shulga, the first Ram in double figures now with 11. This was at one point a 20-point McNeese State lead. Garcia met up by Michael Bell. Shot clock is at five. Garcia pulls up Tough and hits. Tough shot. Tough shot because Bell was playing good defense. Get over that wingspan. Remember, Bell is 6'7", a wingspan of over seven feet. And, and, got and he's it to quick. Go. Yeah. Starting five for both on the floor. Shulga has it against Wells. He's got a size advantage over Wells, but he's more of an open shooter. Here's Jackson inside. Nice play. Nice move. First inside move by Jackson, who did a lot of his scoring on plays just like that last season. 
And when he went inside, he was creating for wow. others as Bell hit the floor hard. Column for three. Was, Jackson the rebound. That was a remarkable screen. <laughs> Nine point lead for McNeese State. Here's Bell for three. No, that's not his game. Shoemate the rebound. That ball never got above the rim until it hit the rim. Wells guarded by Jackson. Nice look to Richards falling away. Shoe made an offensive rebound and couldn't get it to drop. Last touch by McNeese State. Shoe made struggled in this game. He came out playing very well, a lot of leadership, but he struggled to get the ball in the basket. He's one of four from the field, one of three from the line. Yeah. He's better than that. Rams down by nine. They've trailed by as many as 20 in the game. Did you think you'd say that tonight? I didn't think so. Me neither. <laughs> not to discredit McNeese State, they are a good team, but you did not expect them to trail by 20. Nope, not on their home floor. Column guarded by Furman. Here's Richards into the lane against Furman, and Furman gets the rebound. Great. Richards looked back at the ref, wanting to get a foul, didn't get it. I didn't think that was a foul. Shoga a straight on three. Right. And he, a long rebound race down by Richards. He was leaning a little. When he leans, if he's not squared up, he's not as good a shooter. That's a tough shot. Wells, no. Shoemate gets a he foul. Got fouled. He got fouled. Now, as you mentioned, though, he's one of three from the line. So it may not be a bad foul for VCU as Kwani picks the foul up. That's his second. As Lawal and Billups are at the scorer's table, he'll come in, they'll come in on the first attempt from Shoemate in this half. He averaged 15.1 points per game last season, but did not shoot great from the line. 58%, but that one is true. And he's still only two for four. <laughs> If he makes this one, he'll get to 60%. He'll take it, though. Oh, big time. Looking at his, his stats from last year, he took 365 field goals That's a last lot. year. <laughs> That's a lot for a team. He was 200 for 365 from the field, 55%. That's really good. If you're going to be a volume shooter, you need to make 50%. That's a volume shooter, that, no question. Yeah. He made both free throws to give McNeese State an 11-point lead. Jackson, nice look. Billups left open. Got his own rebound, but it's on the floor, and Collum is called for the foul. Rams still struggling with the open three. That was an open three. And lucky to get the ball back. VCU 6 of 23 from the, from the three-point stripe. Here in the game, I guess that was no foul. It was just out of bounds or a kick. I guess. I thought they called the foul. I thought so too. But it was a column. reset to 20, so it might have been a kick. And Billups has it for the Rams. I don't like that rule, by the way. I think if you get possession off a, a rebound in some way, you should get a new 30. Here's Jackson. Nice scoop to the hoop and two free throws rewarded. And that will go against Shoemate, his first. And this is what we have seen more of tonight. Jackson going more to the basket, not settling on the outside shot. Although he did make a couple um, in his first half after, for what, 16 minutes? The only guy who made an outside show was well, Shulga. Uh, Shulga, yeah, who has three of the six that the team has made. Jackson has the other two. Billups has another. And Jackson now with nine so far. Yeah. After the first 15 minutes, he's become more like the player Ryan Odom expects him to be. Nine-point lead. Billups guarding Garcia, as now the Rams will play man. It's Ryan Odom's preferred offense, defense, excuse me. 
Garcia wild on the layup attempt. Shoe made an offensive rebound. Shot didn't hit the rim. No reset on the shot clock. I'm not sure Shoemate Shoe -Mate knows it. It's down to five. Here's Shoemate. Oh my Got goodness. it to drop. He's made one field goal all night. And the second one he makes is with the shot clock at one and semi triple teamed because they knew he had to shoot. Shoemate now with five. And it's an 11 point lead again for McNeese State. Shoga looking at the shot clock, now reads it with 10. Nice feed inside of the wall, sure the finish was. is strong. And that's what we were talking about earlier, that he's got good vision and he's a very good passer. Top 10 in the Mountain West last year in assists. And if you double him, he's gonna find the open man. That's what makes him di difficult. Here's Richards against Jackson. Over to Wells, who found two. Be Furman and Lawal to the basket. What's the old rule? Never give up the baseline. If, you, if you're on the baseline and somebody insists on driving it, you may very well get a charge. Here's Billups for three. Two from distance for Fats Billups. And is now an eight-point lead. Pretty good for a guy who missed more than half a preseason. Only played in about five games last year with a broken thumb. Well has it against Shoga. Shot clock's under 10. Nice move by Wells underneath. Good Misses, help. and then we got a foul. Oh, I thought that was good help there. And that brings us to our first TV timeout of the half. 14.34 to go in the game. McNeese State will shoot free throws when we come back up eight. All right, let's take a look at our Virginia Credit Union assists of the game. Mm -hmm. Max Stroga to Toby Lawal. That's their third one they, in this game. I was going to say, they've done it several times. And like we said, he's a good passer. Look at how he looks around the double team there and finds Zawaga. And if you can get him that close to the basket, he'll make the shot. He ain't going to miss, yeah. I'll tell you that. That was our Virginia Credit Union assist of the game. And right now we've got a uh, we got a good one now. We got a good one. 49-41, McNeese State with the lead on the road. They led by as many as 20 in the game. And Wells will get two opportunities to push it back up to double digits. And the last two minutes of that first half were critical because the Rams looked dead. And then they made two straight threes and got the lead down to 12 by halftime. And then they started the half with a th with three by Shulga yep. and got it to nine. Right. Make that an 11-0 run. And this is the closest they've been. And One of two for it's Wells. Back to nine. And Wells is a scorer. He's got a career high 41 against Kilgore when he played for UT Arlington. Backcourt trap. They surprised Ball knocked them. away. McNeese gets it. Blocked on the shot attempt by Garcia. And Chambers is crazed there. He thought there was a foul. Here's Jackson inside. Doesn't go. Furman an offensive rebound and put back. Chambers has done a nice job, though, changing defenses coming out of timeouts. He surprised the Rams a couple times. Fortunately, they did not get burned that time. Oh, Garcia just pushed off with the left arm and nobody called it. Phillips well, checking him hard. I should correct myself. Several fans to our left called it. Garcia over Billups and Furman for two. Nice, nice move there. But you mentioned about those changes of defense. That's a Will Wade trademark. He yeah. loved to do that after, he especially did. after a, uh, a dead ball timeout or a TV timeout. TV timeout, right. No, in fact, if you scout a Will Wade team, you need to look for that. Yep. Jason Nelson back in for VCU with under 10 to shoot. Here is Billups, the little runner. Tough shot there. Rebound picked up by Cameron Jones. Here's Shoemate inside, Whoa, scores nice. and a foul. Nice pass, nice finish there. I thought Jones was gonna lose the ball because there was a defender behind him, but he knew just when to pick it up. Like Jim Valvano used to always say, if, if you make a steal and you got someone behind you, they don't go to get a hot dog. 
they tried to steal the ball back from him, but Jones was very aware on that play. We were talking about food for the break. You're trying to get me hungry before the game's over with. I'm already hungry, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. But Shu, may we mention him being a volume shooter in his career, especially last year. Yeah. Three of seven from the field. He's, the, he's taken the third most attempts in this game, and he's got a chance to make this a 12-point lead with a three-point opportunity. Still not a great free throw shooter. But and a great tip wow. by Shahada Wells. Who's about, what, six feet? Six one? They have him listed as six foot. And he was he was way over the rim there. That is a four-point trip for McNeese State, who now lead by 13 again. Well, that was a big turnaround. Shoga hits it uh. from distance. Shoga's like a stopper. His fourth from behind the arc. He's got 14. He is leading the Rams in scoring. And Shahada Wells has 17 to lead McNeese State. None more spectacular than the last two. Omar Cooper back in for McNeese. Shot clock is under 10. Now down to five. Down to one. Here's Cooper. He did get it off, but it didn't hit the rim. And Shoga the rebound. They got it to within 10. They can get it to within seven if they can hit from behind the arc. Jackson in rhythm. A little bit short. But you're right. He was in rhythm. It just didn't go in. Cooper the rebound. And one thing we've noticed, I think, with, with Coach Chambers, even when VC was making a little run, he's trusting the guys on the floor. He's not taking the time out. Nope. To settling hasn't. them down. Here's Jones to Shoemate for three. Shoemate has arrived. What did he's I say? High. What did I say earlier? He's better than he, this. He was one for four, one for three. Well, he's been better since then. He's got 12 right now. He must have heard me. The third Cowboy in double figures. The lead back to 13. Shoga trying to create wow. and then draws a blocking foul. That was a break, Blake. A break, I can speak English. Because that looked like a walk to me. Cameron Jones gets called for the foul, his second. Shoga would shoot free throws when we come back with VCU trailing by 13. I think. Well, right now in this second half, it has been Christian Shoemate from Maybe State who has scored nine of his 12 after halftime. He's on the bench on this possession, but it's given McNeese State a 13-point lead over VCU 59-46. Sean Robertson, John Feinstein, our entire Rams Unlimited crew. It had gotten to within eight in this half, and McNeese State has crawled back up and has pulled it within 13. Yeah, and that four-point possession was, was huge because the lead was eight, and it went back to 12. And that foul, which was a break, I think, for VCU, was not a shooting foul. It's on the was floor. It was not a shooting foul, yep. Sugar remains in the game for the Rams. I don't think he can afford to come out. There's Jackson trying to go baseline. These guys play good defense. They switch a lot, but they always seem to be in position one way or the other. Shot clock at two. Here's Nelson for three. Oh, Bell and Jones was, crashing inside, and the arrow is with McNeese. Yep. Bell did a good job getting his hands on the ball, but couldn't quite bring it down. Cameron Jones, the graduate from Memphis, Tennessee. As I mentioned, he last year played at South Carolina State. Before that, Jacksonville State. You know who started his, ooh, they just had to waste a timeout. All that timeout saving by Coach Chambers, and now they had to use one. And that's going to be a full timeout. Because it's the TV, first TV that's timeout. That's right. And with that, we'll take one as well. VCU trailing 59-46 to McNeese State. Well, McNeese State had to burn a timeout. Couldn't get the ball in bounds as they lead by 13 over VCU 59-46. McNeese with a one-point lead in this half as he's outscored the Rams 18-17. to But uh, it's see been back that... and forth. It's been yeah, being runs. showing some more energy and some the shots are falling in this half for them as well. Yeah, Billups has made a three and uh, Sugar's made a three. Shulga's made a three, excuse me. Um, but that timeout they had to use, that could be a factor in the last minute or two. Because now they have two left. 
And VCU has their full three in this half. Shoga along with Bell, Nelson, Wheeler back in, and Jackson. Wells in for McNeese State along with Cooper, Column, Jones, and Richards. Here's Wells who has 17 in the game, Good and that was a wild there. layup attempt. Mm. Wheeler the rebound. Good ball movement by the Rams. Bell cut off by Richards. What do we got? And an official timeout. I think Column got hit. He got he. I saw him bend over. Got some blood on the rebound there, and he kept playing. But then the official noticed there's blood, so he will come out. You don't have to come out anymore, but it looks like he's coming out. Yeah, they're going to clean that up. I think it was he was cut in the mouth, I believe. Yeah, but I, they're looking to see if there was any kind of uh, uh, intentional foul or or swinging elbow. But I don't think I, – I saw – I didn't see anything intentional. It was just one of those things that happens in basketball. I would be surprised if they call anything. Because Wheeler actually was looking at his elbow after that rebound. And now all three officials – are at the uh, replay area. As we're checking it again one more time, as you saw, Wheeler was looking at his elbow after Column kept pointing that, hey, I got blood. And that's when Keith Fogelman stopped play, and then Wheeler is looking at his right elbow to see if he had blood or if he has a scratch. Right. The question is then, if there, there's clearly blood, do you hold anybody responsible, or did it just happen in the course of playing basketball? Right. It looked to me, and I was looking at the ball, but it looked to me like it was just incidental contact, which happens. And to be honest, I'm surprised we don't see that more often. Yeah. Underneath like that. You're right. But it looks like the trainers are cleaning the blood off a of wheeler, and they also wrapped up that right elbow where that scratch may have occurred. And again, you can play. Uh if you get cleaned up in time. Once upon a time, you had to come out if you had blood after, after, after the AIDS uh, scare. Keith Fogelman says no. that everything was good. That's what I thought. I'm never sure if I feel good or bad when I agree with the refs. You're two for two with that. I am so far. It's 0 for 1 making calls. Last touch by McNeese, 18 to shoot for the Rams. You got a long season. You'll, you'll make that up. I'll get one. I predict tomorrow's Tuesday. I think you'll get that one right. I have a shot. Oh, good, good hands there. Jackson recovers under 10 to shoot. Here's Ryan Nelson Odom to wanted a reach foul there. That's off. Halfway down, though. It was a lot closer than I thought, to be honest. I thought it was wide left. Shoemate now with a double-double as he just grabbed his 11th rebound of the game. He already has 12, nine in this half. Here's Garcia, blocked by Wheeler, saved by Jackson. Good thing Wheeler was able to stay in the game. Here's Jackson underneath and scores. He's got a dozen. That was a big, big exchange because McNeese had a chance to get up 15 or 16. Shot blocked by Wheeler, and then they end up cutting into 11. That was a big exchange. Inside nine and a half minutes in this game with McNeese up 11. Here is Wells, guarded by Nelson, under 10 to shoot for the Cowboys. Coming off a Shoemate screen. Shoemate with one to shoot. Just got it off the rim. VCU can get it to within in under single digits. That tough pass, and it went off of Wheeler's hands out of bounds. Again, Ryan Odom thinking maybe there was a foul. I didn't see one, did you? I didn't think so. I just think it went off of That's what I thought. Off of Wheeler's hands. It was a tough pass. Rams' 10th turnover of the game 
Good play there by McNeese on the inbounds because the ball was in the corner. That's a tough inbounds pass. No question. McNeese in this game with only three turnovers. And, the, and one was on the first possession of the game. That's it's amazing. Remarkable. Season opener, so many new faces. And a tough defensive team. Tough defensive team without your head coach, got an interim coach, and you got three turnovers. Lawal with the block on Garcia. Of course, the interim coach knows this building. Very well. <laughs> Graduated from college in this building, yes, right? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he sees that banner, that Final Four banner. A big yeah, part I was of that say, team. He might have a few other memories, too. Jackson guarded by Jones. Tried to go with the lob to the wall, and it goes over and, his head. And, and that's a first game kind of mistake. The idea was good. The execution wasn't close, to be honest. By the way, I'm older than you, so I've seen more basketball. But of all the basketball games I've ever seen in my life, VCU Kansas and the way VCU dominated is one of the most amazing I've ever seen. It's in 2011. Yeah, I was going to say that that's the, probably the biggest win. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, but I mean, the way they won. They yeah, were in yeah. control the whole game. Yeah. Yep. Against the top seeded team. And the brash talk that Kansas had leading up to that. Yeah. Jones misses on the corner three. Long rebound to McNeese State. Bad break there for VCU. And another opportunity to take more time off the clock. Here's Richards changing his mind to column with under 10 to shoot against Wheeler. Richards for three. He was squared up. Good shot. Big shot. Got a big pick on Nelson. Yep. And hits that wide open three to make it a 14 point lead. Time is starting to become a factor here. Richards now with 17. He's tied with Wells for the game high. Here's Jackson looking for Nelson for three. Tipped by Wells and secured by Garcia. Not sure that was the smartest play to tip it into the middle of the lane, but it worked out. From, Here is from Wells a... blowing by Shulga and scores. Timeout, uh, Coach Odom. I think Shulga thought there was some help there, and there wasn't. And I think Ryan Odom called a full timeout there. As McNeese State back up by 16. Back here at the Siegel Center with McNeese State leading 64-48 over VCU. Uh, and looking at that McNeese State non-conference schedule, I'm looking at that game December 29th when they've got to go to uh, Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor to take on Jawan Howard and the Michigan Wolverines. Yeah, that, that's probably not a win. They're also playing the Mississippi University of Mississippi for Women, yep. which is a co-ed school. It is. And I has did, I, been since 1984. I did check that out. It is. Yeah. That you're absolutely right. I actually spoke there once. You did? Yeah. And and I, I said, uh, wow, it's great that uh, you invited me. And they said, well, last year we had Bob Woodward. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a come down. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but I was glad to do it. They also have Louisiana Tech on their schedule and yeah. a game at UAB, Alabama, Birmingham. Oh, yeah, that, that December 29th game. Uh, Coach Wade mentioned, he said, you know, we're going to go to hostile environments this year, Michigan, obviously, but right. probably no more hostile environment than this one yeah. here at the Siegel Center. And yet, for the most part, the crowd has been a non-factor. Yeah, they've been quiet most of the night. That's what you do when you're a visiting team in here, if you can play well, and they played well. They've shot the ball well. They've also taken care of the ball extremely well. Jackson underneath scores. Nice move. He's, he's played a lot better since he started taking it to the basket. Still a lot of time, under six and a half to go. Oh, in college Down basketball, this is forever. Really five possessions right here in this game with the three-point element. Well, Here's Garcia against Bell and Furman, and Bell took it away. Keep driving into those long-armed Rams. Jackson, long on the three. That was a push-off. And we got a foul that will be on this side. It'll stay yeah. here as the foul is going to go against Cameron Jones. And we're still not shooting on either side. No. In fact, there have been very few fouls in this half. 14 Three fouls apiece. now. And here's that last play by Jackson. Nice move inside by him. Yep. I still think that's the strength of his game. He can make a three. He's made a couple tonight, but I think the strength of his game is going to the basket and if he gets doubled, finding a shooter. 
VCU will inbound with 20 on the clock. Six minutes to go, down by 14. Back to zone. Billups, clean look for three. Huh. Isn't, that, isn't that sort of the story of tonight when VCU has a shot that hits the rim four times, it rolls out. When McNeese has a shot that hits the rim four times, it goes in. And because of that last bounce, Furman missed time to jump. He was yeah. there to get an offensive yeah. rebound. It did take ooh, the extra. Good tip by yeah. Bell. That should Knocked be VCU floor. ball. Out of bounds. I, Nobody uh, had a clean look. I thought the it was VCU. The possession arrow will favor no, VCU. favors VCU. Absolutely. But I honestly, I honestly thought the ball was off McNeese. Now they cannot go to replay on this. Not so under two minutes, you can, that, but not at right. this point in the game. And we'll watch Let, it again on watch the replay. It again. See what? See if I know what I'm talking about. Well, we know I don't. See, I thought I went off a of 14. So Very close. Yeah, it looked close. It was close. There's no question. That's why it ended up being a jump ball. All three officials now with a with no clear look. Right, and, that, and that's smart officiating. Yep. If you haven't got a clear look, don't pretend you do. I hate when officials do that. Well, you think I may have it, but you really don't. Yeah. Well, what makes me crazy is when they, they're screened and he stepped on the baseline. That's a big mistake. Is when an official is screened and somehow he thinks he saw through the screen and he makes a call. You can't see through a screen. 12th turnover for VCU, just five for McNeese State. Mm -hmm. Leading by 14. We're inside five and a half minutes. And as I said, time has become a factor now. You wonder what, how will McNeese State run the offense here with that lead? They got to run the regular offense. Column. That was not a good shot at all. Another stop by VCU. Can they get it to within 11? Here's Shoga against Wells. And goes to the Here's basket Jackson. and he gets Draws. fouled. But it's non shooting. That will be the fourth team foul on McNeese. That's Shoemate's third. Let's see what the score is when we get to the last TV timeout and see if Ryan Odom decides to press after that TV timeout. I was just thinking the same thing. What will he do? Can they get it to single digits on that last TV timeout? Inside nice. the bell. Nice play and poor defense. They just let Bell walk inside the lane. Well, that's a foul. Again, non-shooting. That'll be on Billups. His third, fourth team foul. Only takes one second off the clock. Well, he wanted a full court pressure. Straight yep. man, not a lot of trapping, just right. full court pressure defense. Make him work. Yep. I yep. hope they make a mistake. And with that length. Bell is dangerous. Yep. 6'7 seven with a 7-plus seven foot wingspan. And quick enough to stay with the guard. Yeah. That's the dangerous thing about his game. He's a forward, but, but plays like a guard. Yeah, except for a shooting. Wells for three. Follow-up no by Shoemate and a foul. I think we're staying down here. I think that's on Billups. No, maybe not. I think they're going the other way. It's going to be on Column, I believe. Oh. I saw him. Uh, yeah. I saw them say five, and I thought they were talking about Billups. That was very close to basket interference. By Shoemate, he he well he just hung released, on the, yeah, he he hung on the rim, it. but you are allowed to hang on the rim if you if somebody's underneath you. The only time you can't hang on the rim is if you swing, you know, to show off. Inside four and a half minutes, inside money time with VCU trailing by twelve. Can they get it under ten before the last TV timeout? Well, Sugar got Shuga a good free throw control. shooter. I and think he'll get he two free throws. I think he's shooting, right? That's Shahada yep. Wells. He is shooting. And as you said, he's an 85% free throw shooter. Was one of the best in the Mountain West Conference last year. As he averaged career highs in points, rebounds, and assists. And he's got four assists tonight, in addition to 14 points. And he was battling some injuries during the preseason. He didn't play in their exhibition win against Mars Hill. But he's looking, looking like he was a uh, preseason A-10 selection, second yeah. team in Mountain West, honorable mention. If he was a quick stepper on defense, quick, quick, one quicker, quick step. 
whatever, if he was a little quicker on defense, he could be an NBA player. He's got the rest of it. Speaks four languages. Does that help in the NBA? It can. It can't hurt, I guess. Being more global. Yeah. Richards had a clean look at the three, but then tried to attack the rim and draws a foul. And it's non-shooting. That's the sixth, fifth foul on VCU, and we get the last TV timeout. With McNeese State up by 10. We got a good one coming down the stretch. Four minutes, and McNeese State leading by 10 over VCU. Sean Robertson along with John Feinstein, our entire Rams Unlimited crew. And uh, it's got the makings of maybe a last possession. Yeah, I just have a feeling, and I'm not going to say what I feel because it'll, it'll it won't you. come true. Yeah, <laughs> won't come true. Um, but you feel, and I, we felt this almost all second half, that VCU's just ready to make a move and ready to hit a shot that'll get the crowd going. And the lead's 10. That's not that much with four minutes left to go. And one thing about McNeese so far tonight is they've not been a great free throw shooting team. And they're eventually going to be in one and one, two more fouls. And they're going to have to make some free throws, I think. Well, right now they're shooting just above 63% from the line in tonight's game. VCU just below 67. 12 of 19 for McNeese, 8 of 12 for the Rams. We're having trouble getting it in again. Garcia's got to just get it in. In the old days, that might have been five seconds I because the rule was, very was close. Because the rule was you had to get it to someone's hands within five seconds. And a reach in on VCU. Reach Still non shooting. It's their sixth. That's going to be on Bell. Last foul to give for VCU. And that was a non shooting foul, a pass in inside. Everybody shoots the rest of the way. Oh, check it. They said that was. The officials say it was seven. No, unless oh, no, now, the scoreboard's wrong. Yeah, Fogelman now said it was side, side out of bounds baseline out of bounds and now coach chambers is arguing something he, he's trying to claim it was a, a shooting foul which no, they it was switched not. it quick the inbound inside oh boy. to wells who scores you can't allow that I McNeese mean, just allowed one a minute ago but you've got to be aware of that cutter on an inbounds pass everybody practices those 21 for shahada wells and the lead back to 12. shoga for three Boy, how do you leave him open? He's Big the one shot. guy on the team you cannot allow a three-point shot. And they got it to within nine. A three-possession game now for McNeese State. Who gets the shot on this possession for McNeese? Well, they seem to be running their offense, although the clock's down to 12 now. Here is Wells going past Furman. Mm -hmm. Nice feed to Shoemate. And scores. What a power move by Christian Shoemate. Well, it was a good pass, and like you said, great finish there because he was guarded. Furman got there, and he Shulga powered it up. Shooting. And Shulga oh, hits man. another three. And he was guarded that time. That was not a McNeese defensive error. He just caught it. That's the first one I've seen him shoot off the dribble tonight. Shulga has 22. Oh, boy. Here's Shoemate. Wells inside oh, and he's scores tough. over Bell. I mean, scoring over Bell is not easy. Back and forth, but that favors McNeese State here. And we've got a blocking foul as Bell ran over Shoemate, but Shoemate got there late. And it'll be one and one for Bell, who I'm guessing is not a great free throw shooter. We have no stats to prove it one way or the other. Well, while playing in that French under-21 league, he did average 17 points, nine rebounds over three assists. So he could definitely do it. Richards thought that was a pass and not a shot attempt. He was like, no, he's not shooting free throws, but it is a one and one Both teams, as John mentioned a couple of minutes ago, will be shooting free throws the rest of the game. Bell's front end makes it a nine-point lead. Shows you what I know about basketball. Kwani Kwani back in, replacing Furman. 
We got to give credit to Shahada Wells oh for McNeese State. Couple of big shots. He is in this he's half. He's fearless, that's for sure. He's got a game high 23. So Shoga Bell, has 22. Bell is a 1,000 percent free throw shooter in college. Two for two, and it's an eight point lead with under two and a half to go. Full court pressure, almost turned it over. Oh, they got Here's lucky. Shoemate. Brings it in. They got so lucky. That was so close to a turnover, and it ends up as a dunk, which is what happens very often, is if you look like you're going to get a steal and don't. 16 now for Shoemate. Billups for three. Another triple made, and now Odom wants and gets the timeout. Yeah, he wants to set up his defense. He's VCU has made their last four from the field. Three have been from behind the arc. Two from Shoga, and that one from Billups. But the last one, almost a travel, as that pass just got off, and Shoe may finish it strong. As we see here, well, we're blocked out by, we're blocked out. That was Billups. By, I know it was Billups, but we couldn't see him release it. But now we can see him release it. And he's, he's come off the bench and really giving them some spark that they need. He's the only guy really to make any threes other than Shulga, who's what, what has he got now, six? He's got six, six yeah. of nine. That's from, good shooting. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because that, it's the equivalent of nine of nine from two. And Billups has three of six. He's got nine. All yeah. nine of his shot, all nine of his points have been from behind the arc. But, again, under two to go, seven-point game. Seven-point game, and what I, what I think the Rams are going to do is they're going to press, they're probably going to trap, and if they can't get a steal, I, I think they'll foul pretty quickly because it's still a three-possession game. VCU with one timeout left, McNeese State with two. Two. And since Odom used the timeout, McNeese can use the entire baseline to inbound. Exactly right. And there they go. And here comes the trap. Here comes another trap. Shoemate gets it to Garcia. Well, I would think they foul pretty quickly here. Odom saying no. Palms uh -huh. facing down. He's like, let's play it out. So it, now you want to run the clock to at least 10 seconds if you're McNeese. Dangerous pass knocked out by Bell. Very lucky. Eight, Eight. seconds to go on the shot clock. VCU wanted a, a review. They can ask for one. With under two minutes well, to go. Well, assistant coach Max Henry, Mark, Matt Henry, I beg your pardon, was signaling to see if they could get a review. Yeah. And I think one of the no, officials I think they're will get do it. that. Yes, they're indeed. Get it. Again, under two minutes, you can ask for a review on an inbounds, on an out of bounds play. And they will check to see if Bell was the last to touch it. I we couldn't see from we're here. Not from our vantage yeah. point. Or and we'll see now on the replay whether or not that was the case. Really can't, can't see tell. it from there either. I can't tell. And the official was right on it. Yeah. But I can't tell. And that's Keith Fogelman, the lead official yep. in tonight's game, along with Andrew Barksdale and Kurt Tackett. We'll see it one more time from the baseline. This could be a better angle for us and for them. Yeah, I think, I think. I think Bell touched it I last. I think Bell touched it last, yeah. Column was reaching. Right. But he pulled but I off, and I think I think Fogelman got the call right. I think he did too, and we'll see if the replay. And the other thing is, remember, since they called the ball for McNeese, there has to be overwhelming evidence that it was the other way. Indisputable evidence. Indisputable evidence. It will stay with McNeese State. Yeah, I think that's correct. I mean, if your VCU has no harm and calling for the review in that, that close of a play. No, no, no harm at all. Because it's not like you lose a, a challenge or something. Exactly. You might as well call for it. Only eight seconds on the shot clock. And you could actually set up your defense on that timeout as well. And you could also set up an inbounds play. <laughs> Shoemate has it against Billups with five to shoot. Shoemate inside. Oh, my Tough goodness. move. Shoemate has been unbelievable in the second half after being not good in the first. That's a big-time move there yeah, the by big, the junior. Big-time basket. Nine-point lead for McNeese State, 
Ooh. Almost a steal, Dus. Is a steal. Here's Wells. Oh, misses the he slam. missed. That would have been a dagger, but he but steals he gets it, it back. back. He should throw it out. Here's Shoemate using the dribble and had it blocked by Bell out of bounds. They were unbelievable. And they're going to say it goes to VCU. Yeah. Why, why they would take a shot at that point? The open layup, I understand. The open layup you got to take, and he, he missed. But then when you get the ball back, you got to think. You got to say there's 50, wow. a minute to go in the game. It's 58.6 now. And they kick it back out again. and make them foul. And then Shoemate, he got away with a walk. He, he sure did. And then he got the shot blocked. And I, I think it was off Shoemate. Former VCU standout Rob Brandenburg, who's on that baseline, he was signaling that it was going to VCU. But this one, a, a gap. Oh, my goodness. By Shahada Wells. Who's but, had a great game. Yeah, and recovered and he to get the steal. steals it back. You got to go back outside with the ball, and you're right. He got away with it. He got away with it. And it, Ooh, it might have been off VCU, though. Man, that's close. But nice. remember, the call on the floor was Has VCU be, basketball. So right. now they got to say. They got to have indisputable evidence to send it the other way. Interesting call that it went to VCU. Watch it again. And after the play here, did Shoemate touch it last? He might have. He might have gotten inside there to touch it. I think it's going to end up being VCU ball because I don't think you can get the indisputable evidence. Yeah, he really can. And, and the officials are seeing the replays that we are seeing. And they have got to shoot a three here. They can't shoot a two. Down by nine, absolutely. So did he touch it after the bell block? Ooh, right there it looked to me like Bell had the ball on his hands. Man, that's close. But again, if it's close, it stays VCU ball. And yep. it will stay and with VCU does. ball. And it does. we got to give Rob Brandenburg a striped shirt because he was right there <laughs> on the baseline. He jumped off, jumped out of his chair and signaled VCU basketball. Well, and he's unbiased. A little bit. <laughs> but here's but he the thing. But he knows Brandon Chambers very well. Yes, he does. Here's the thing, though. If VCU pulls this out, that play will be the play of the game. Because if they pull the ball back or if they succeed on the dunk, I think the game's over. Yeah, if he Le makes the dunk, you're up 11, 11 at that point. Yeah. Three possession game for McNeese They're State. Trying to get a shot for Shulga. Here's Shulga. Nice feed to Kwani, oh who goodness. lost control of it. Column the rebound, and Kwani has to get the foul. And now okay, a little I'm bit not, of a skirmish. I'm not sure why they didn't kick it back out. And the foul is on VCU. Yep. So they lost 12 seconds there. And even if the ball had gone in, it still would have been a seven-point lead. Still would have so, been three possessions. Yep, exactly. And it's a one-and-one one for a column, who's a good free-throw shooter after last year. Played, his, played at Cal State Bakersfield after transferring from Ole Miss. And he shot 77% last season for the Roadrunners. A little different one-and-one one in the last minute of the game. And Cal State Bakerfield, coach uh, formerly, uh, I think he's still coached there, Rod Barnes. From yeah, old, he's former Ole Miss coach. Former Ole Miss coach. Still had connections to Ole Miss, clearly. Absolutely. He's a good coach, in my he opinion. He is. He is. Really good guy. He had some good teams at Mississippi. Kyla made a big first free throw. Yeah, because yeah, now it's another possession. It's 11 now. Now you just got to get a shot quickly. Any shot. 76-65, McNeese State. Jackson for three. Oh. Column the rebound, and that might have sealed it. It might have. We got a foul right away. And they do a little bit late as Shulga has to burn it. And the, the fans that made the trip from Lake Charles, Louisiana, are going to celebrate on back. Yeah. And somewhere in Lake Charles, Louisiana, a former VCU coach is, is celebrating. I think he's smiling and right he's about entitled. now. I think he's smiling right about now. Yeah. And yep. Brandon Chambers is smiling as well. As he should be. The student assistant on the VCU 2011 Final Four team is going to get his first win as an interim head coach. With 22 seconds to go, Shulga misses the three. Shoemate with his 13th rebound. It's over. And that will seal it. First ever meeting between the two programs. Ryan it Sane, will be McNeese no State. 
coming away with the victory. And 76 to 65. And great performance by the Cowboys. Um, they played very well. They didn't wilt when the game got closer. And I think the closest that VCU got was eight. Was eight. And that's remarkable. They were behind virtually the entire game. Got behind by 20 in the first half and then got it to eight with plenty of time left in the game. And, and I think that stretch where they got it back to 16. Yeah. That was like That okay. was it. Yep. That was it. And they made some really good plays to get it back to 16. Well, there were come, mental errors on both sides, which you expect in an opening game. But, wow, what a win for McNeese and a very disappointing loss, obviously, we'll for VCU. And we'll come back to talk more about it when we come back.